Hey everybody, Brian Martin with you for another session of Affinity Publisher. New cool feature. Uh, I just uploaded version 1.9 the other day uh, when I got my new laptop. And I noticed this button right here. Look at that button right there. Hold the thing over it. The Data Merge Layout Tool. And I saw that and said, oh my goodness. Data merge. Is that mail merge? Is, is, is it? So I went out to the uh, Affinity website, found the video on how to use data merge, and found out that this is exactly what I have been waiting for, and many of you card creators have been waiting for as well. How do I make all of these cards without having to go into each card and edit it all the time? Think about my USBL project. I had drafted teams. I created each of those cards for all those players. I entered in all of their data for all of the all the cards, their name, their position, had to change different things. And I did that manually for every single one of the cards in the set. And then when I did season two, I went in and had to change all the names of the players who left the league and replace them with new players and new ratings. I had to change uh, some of the things in terms of positions that they played. It was crazy and it took a lot of time. But now you can do all that work offline and then have a template in which you can reload and get yourself some beautiful, beautiful cards if you like. Now, um, there are ways to bring in, uh, for example, uh, images, which I haven't learned how to merge the images. And I've, what I've done is I've gone to a single monochrome card because, again, when it comes to color, I don't know how you can set it to create different colored versions of the same card. So it's just a matter of... Uh, you know, having you know, having the team colors and stuff. So for right now, I'm going to use black and white to do the demonstration and get us on the on this uh, right page. So what I'm going to do is using the control equal sign, I'm going to uh, zoom in to show you how we get started. You get started the same way that you start with the regular cards that you were doing manually. Make a template. This is my template. It's got a little black border. It's got a border around the name. This will be where the batting ratings are. This is where all the auxiliary ratings are. And down here will be the team. Black and white. And I've got the different fonts already set up. So here's the best part. You only need to do this one time. Create your custom card template just once and, and put it right here. At the same time, you've also got to make sure, as I use the control minus sign to zoom out, you need to also make sure that you set up your card grid with the grid lines, like we did before, um, to do the eight by the three by six for 18 cards. Keeping in mind these cards are sized at 60, uh, 44 wide by 68 tall in millimeters, and the grid system on the uh, page um, is four millimeters to the square. So you have to still lay out the cards, and you still have to lay out your sheet, get your margins set up properly, get that whole thing done, but you only need to create one card template. And as we go through, you'll see how that works, and why it works, and why you really only need the one template. So we have our layers, we have our grid lines as a layer. That's all the, the lines you see on the, the cards. You have the player card template, which you can see is highlighted. Now, how do we get to the data set and how do we get the cards then built to be data merged? To get the data set, you go to Document, Data Merge Manager. Now, I'm going to delete this to show you how it works. It's going to come up a blank screen. And <clears throat> you add a source by clicking on this little page document. And I've already called this card data. So you just double click on that. And now I've got card data as my document that's looking at. It's a CSV file, so one page. So if you put batting and pitching ratings on the same uh, cards so that you know pitchers can hit, you just need to make sure that in your CSV file, any fields that are blank are, are blank. And you can play around with it if you need to. Um, to see whether it should be blank or whether it should be a single apostrophe, which is basically a blank text field. There's an update button, so if ever you get this data set and you go back and you change some data and you keep it linked to this file and you update, 
it'll make all your changes. So that's great for going into the next season and saying, I've changed all the players I need to change. Nobody else changed. I just want to create a brand new card set. Boom, update, and then going forward, you'll be able to do a brand new season with an update click and then click of another button. You have a whole card set redone, and the work is done in the background in an Excel file that's a lot easier to manage. You can choose all records or arrange. I'm going to keep all records. You can preview if you like. And I'm going to click off Merge Enabled for right now. And Generate only happens after we've got everything ready to go. So um, <clears throat> now we're ready to add our, add our in input. You need to add the fields. And to do that, you need to go to Text, Insert, Fields, More, and this this doesn't pop up necessarily here. That's it's here because this is where I left it last time. It usually pops up over in this area. But you can when it does pop up, you can see the fields tab here. You can just click on the tab and drag it over, and there you go. So we'll leave that to the side. It tells you um, as you scroll down, you've got uh, the document information, statistics sections etc. But really what you want to do is collapse everything till you get to the data merge of, of fields here. And you can tell it's a field name because it puts the brackets around it. The, just like you would in, in a word mail merge, it's got brackets to show you that it's a field. We're not going to worry about what the fields mean and what they are because right now we're just going to put them in and I'll tell you what the fields actually represent as we go along. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put the player name in. So I've got my player name placard. I click on the text box there. I go over to the text tool here. You'll notice there's a little right there is a blinking cursor. I'm going to double click name. That name is already set uh, to uh, be Arial Nova Condensed Bold Italic 10 point font. So that's exactly what I want. So name goes there. That's 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 how easy it is to put a field in. Notice it doesn't tell you what name. It just is putting a field name there. Now we go to put the player position in. And we click here, and this is already centered and everything, so then we double-click POS. And you want to double-click this side, not the field name, but this side. And you got to be very precise and click right on the word. So there's the position. Now we want to put in bats and throws. So we click over there. Keep in mind I'm in text mode here, and I'm clicking on these text boxes to add the field in the text box. So we double-click on bat. And then down here we have a table. We enter into the table. And we're going to put this bat one. That's you know the first of the two potential batting ratings that a player can have. So we double click that. Go to the next cell. That's the second one. Power one would be like home run king. Power two would be slugger. BB would be the uh, the K would be the the whiffer, and BB would be the good eye. Now those fonts are rather large, so we're going to highlight all of those cells. And go over here and change the font to Arial Nova Condensed. And we're going to make it a nine point font. And you can see now it looks it looks kind of nice. It, it, and it's 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 condensed, it's thin. Um, that's gonna allow more data to fill a field. Down here we add our last three ratings. We've got speed, we've got fielding, and we've got experience. And again, those are a bit big. So we highlight the cells and we change them to Arial Nova, Condensed, not bold or italics, and 9 point. And we're good there. Come down to the bottom here and we have um, our team nickname placard and inside there's a text box for team nickname. I'm going to just alter that a little bit. Click here and you'll notice you can barely see it but there's a little blinking cursor there because that's where the team is going to go. And now that I've got name, position, batting, the batting, the possible batting fields, the possible extra fields, and the team, I can close the fields tab. But I'll, I'll leave it up. No, I'll close it so we can see what we're doing. And then I just click out of there, and then I go over here to prevent anything from happening and go to my Move tool, and I won't be moving anything. So now we get into, and I'm going to go back out here using Control. Um, minus sign so you can see the whole page of cards. So we've created the one card, we've added the fields, and now we're gonna, this is the magic. 
We're going to collapse the player card because we don't need to touch that anymore. Here's the magic of what, what all of this is about. Now we go to the data merge layout tool and we click it. We go here to this upper corner and you'll see where the red and green lines intersect. That's the top corner of our uh, thing. And we drag all the way down to the bottom corner. See where the red and re green lines? That means we're right on that bottom corner. <clears throat> now you'll notice there's two rows and two columns. We're going to change that to three rows and watch what happens. Now each of the rows lines up exactly with the row lines on the grid lines. And we're going to go three, four, five, six columns. And look at that. Look at that. Your data merge layout field is identical to the layout field for the card set itself. So we click over here and get out of there. Now, you got to do one more important uh, technical thing before you can create the file. Drag the data merge layout and put it in between the grid line. See where that blue line is partial but then it's full? When that blue line is fully across the whole column, let it go. So now I've put the data merge layout and my grid lines are uh, above that. Now my player card, watch what happens to this screen right here when I take the player card out of that and move it up and see where the blue line see how it is indented see how the blue line is indented there remember what that means from the previous training it means that I'm making the player card a subset of the data merge layout look what happened to the screen check out the screen look at that it automatically made the player card part of the merge layout and as I blow this screen up it has now created 17 additional versions of the initial card all with the fields filled in okay we're almost there we're almost at the point where you can create a card set what do we do next you're gonna want to save this right now we're gonna do a file save as we're gonna call it the affinity card video file I already set this up I'm gonna overwrite it but you call it whatever you want but this is the affinity card video file this is saying these are this is the file that I want to go back and use over and over and over and over and over and over again because I saved it without any data in it I saved it with just the fields okay and now comes the magic the magic comes from how do I go and make the document we go back to the document tab we go to data merge manager we click on merge enabled and we click generate the data merge is happening it's gonna blink and flash in the background so you can close this now you look and you say well there's only six cards here that is true but notice where the slider bar is we are on the sixth page let's slide that slider bar back up to the top and let's increase the piece look at that Baltimore and Duncan Otto, Wade Allen, Todd Sargent, Mike St. Clair. And then we go to Cleveland, Matt Hubstack, and Omar Ross. Oh, and there's the Hawaii batters, and the Houston batters, and the Kansas City batters, and the Phoenix batters, and the San Diego batters, and the Seattle batters, and 12 blank cards after that. That's it. Everybody's there. Every card has been automatically created exactly the way we want, exactly how we want it to look, exactly how we want it to be. And now there's two things left that we need to do. The first thing we need to do is do a file save as for this. If you save it, plain save, it will save it over the file that we just created and it will replace all the fields with the data and you'll have to do this all over again so be very careful once you've created the data and you're in this window see it says untitled it right now you do file here's the here's the affinity card video file with the uh, field names here's the one we just created so we're going to do file save as we're going to call it the affinity card video uh, card video cards created i already created that file earlier we're going to overwrite it that that now saves 
my stuff. So if I close this file, which is the basics with the fields, you know, I don't want to change. I don't want to change the changes because I already saved it. And I've got this one. And then I want to do one last thing: file, export, PDF, hit export. We're going to call it. Where are we going to call it? Uh, we're going to call it uh, black and white cards. No, nah, we'll call it. Uh, yeah, we'll just call it Affinity Cards Created PDF. We'll save it. After it exports, we go over to the file piece. We open this, and there you go. There is your complete official card set that you created in black and white. And that's all there is to it. When we're done, we can do a file save as again, just to save it again. Again, keeping in mind it's the cards created, we save it. Want to replace it? The answer is yes, and we're done. There you have it. That's how you use the man, the new data merge uh, system in Affinity Publisher. You create one card template. You create your page template. You use the data merge layout tool to match the card template with the data merge template, and then make sure you drag the card underneath the the. Uh, Let's reopen this file here. Didn't save it. Why did it not save it? Oh, I know why, because I forgot to. Here we go, Handy card video file. See if we can open this. There it is. There's the file. Okay, so you have that all open. You're good to go. You create one card, and then you make sure that you drag the player card so that it is subservient to the data merge layout right here, and you're good to go. Simple and easy as that, and we are golden to go. So once again, thank you for your attention and your time today. We I look forward to hearing your comments that you might have about how this worked. Until next time, this is Brian Martin saying, so long, everybody.